to find the race, the BMW IBSF Bobsleigh World Cup and Skeleton Campaign. As we head into the World Championships starting next week, we are in Segulda in Latvia for the final race of the weekend. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Hope you've calmed down after the crazy women's skeleton race as we get ready for our European Championship decider in the two-man Bob. Martin Haven and alongside me, Canadian brakeman Ben Coke. Well, Ben, this Segulda track on the World Cup campaign for only the second time. You guys didn't come here last year, so as a newbie, what were your first impressions of Segulda? I mean, this track is wild um, <laughs> from start to finish. As you can see from the results of the race last uh, last night, uh, it is crazy. It's a driver's track. Um, you know, there's a lot of full steers, and even then it's not enough to get you through some of these corners. Um, hold on to your hat and, and, and make it down as fast as you can. It is really busy, isn't it? You've got a nine-corner labyrinth right from the very get-go. It's, it's just constant action. Well, and I just imagine, um, you know, those old Rock'em Sock'em dolls where they're just uh, boxing back and forth. <laughs> That's kind of what the pilot's doing up there. And, uh, I mean, it's it's crazy, and it awards a, a talented, consistent pilot. And so that's a that's a really good thing to have uh, in a bobsleigh race. First key area is here, 11 to 12, a really important transition. Then out of big corner, 13 into 14. And again, the exit from 14, the longest straight in Christendom. Somewhere up there is 15. Here we go and then another long straight. You go uphill over the exit of the Chrysler and into the final corner, 270 degrees, two big pressures, and you feel a lot of pressure on the fast corner on these tracks as well. Yeah, I mean, it rivals the pressure that you feel in the bottom of Whistler, which is one of the fastest tracks yeah. in the world, and it's uh, it's it's a, it's a an exciting track to ride as a brakeman, for sure, because those pressures are, <laughs> are pretty yeah. nasty. 1,200 busy meters. Francesco Friedrich is our World Cup champion. He cannot ne now be caught. He's not racing today, but Justin Cripps, Oscars Kibermanis are in the tie or in a tight battle for second place and then everybody else basically down in the rest of the top nine are within literal touching distance of each other. There's yesterday's race winner Oscars Kibermanis. Now he won here for the very first time in his two-man World Cup career so a huge day for him after taking two silvers behind Francesco Friedrich and uh, you just saw your driver there Justin Cripps limbering up. Now he's got Sam Giger behind him today so keep everybody race fit and healthy at the same time and that's really critical with the world championships coming up starting next week yeah i mean uh, altenburg's a, a take no prisoners track yeah and um, keeping the brakeman in good shape is great uh, sam's been in and out of the program for quite a few years now and he's a great team guy and he's a very talented athlete and i think he'll actually have a pretty good day today and it you know that these three world championships last year whistler this year altenburg next week lake placid Boy, that's some tough world championship action to get us ready for Beijing. So our start list today had had 19 sleds. We are now down to 18. Dominic Dvorak, we're hearing, will not go for the Czech Republic, so he does not make his 28th World Cup start. So 18 starters, which means that everybody who completes the run gets across the timing beam, that is, whether you're the right way up or not, will get a second heat. Won't necessarily have a great result. Final race of the two-man bobsleigh World Cup. We're at Segulda in Latvia. Martin Haven and Ben Cokewell watching Benny Meyer and Marcus Sammer get the action underway. Yeah, this first push will give us an idea as to what the ice is like and, of course, the, the run, and we'll see how close to the track record they are. We've had start records and track records in every discipline so far this weekend. And some big changes. 497 getaway. The record is 480 from yesterday. Little nudge from three to four, out of big corner five, and then into the second labyrinth. Normally, most tracks have one labyrinth. This has got two nailed together. And then heading down into corner 11, the exit here, and the crossover to 12 is so critical. And now you're really feeling the G-forces working on the sled as well through 13 and 14. The straight that feels like forever. Out of 15. Another long straight into corner 16. This unique finishing Chrysler. And good speed at the bottom, 125.6 for a 49.74 run. Yeah, that's a, you know, his transition out of 11 and out of 13 was was really well done. And that's a pretty good time for, for Benny today. Yeah, that's half a second faster than his first trip down yesterday. Now, bearing in mind, it's only the second World Cup that most drivers will have driven here. Every trip adds to that knowledge, right? Yeah, and it's, you know, it's practice makes perfect. The more trips you have, the better you're going to be. It's that yeah. simple. 
So Benny Meyer with some good exits laid down. Watch the runner tips. You saw him steering and then just holding the sled until he got the exit he wanted. Big height there as well. You get pushed away by the roll of ice at the top. And if you see that, then the driver has to work hard to get the exit off 14 and not crash. Yeah, and for you guys that are watching, in, in corner 11 and corner 13, you see that nose start to come back up towards the end. Hold on, because it's going to be a wild exit. Yeah, we had some pretty, uh, pretty hellacious rides yesterday. Uh, next up, 46 World Cup start for Evo de Brown. Uh, Evo finishing in 16th place in yesterday's race with Dennis Fanker, who's behind him again today. First start for them yesterday was a 5.07. And they get a 5.06. The start track pretty much the same as it was yesterday. Yeah, and it's consistent. Um, and the it's feature the here, day. feature here of the start, of course, is it's five floors up in the elevator to get to the start. So here you're still suspended above the ground until you get down to about corner six and seven. Yeah, it's 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 actually it's such a unique track from start to finish. And yeah, the the, the elevators in each floor stores a different uh, a different hidden gem, and, and then it's, of course at the top is the the start, and it's uh, it's cool. Yeah, past homeware and lingerie. 3,500s back for Evo de Brown behind Benny Meyer. Big height there, but holds it on. Over the brow into corner 16. And how far behind will he be at the line? 4,100s back. So a 50.15. That's Vim on the right hand side. Vim Norman from Eurotech, who builds the sled. This is a development Eurotech sled. Different aerodynamics, different axles, different steering to uh, the sleds that were used a l a very successfully over a number of years, particularly by the Canadian team. Whee. Yeah, this uh, this final straightaway is with the with the uphill section. It's just you get a sense of weightlessness in mm. the back. It's such a unique feeling. It could be tricky because sometimes that's a cue to to pull the brakes. And yeah, you <laughs> got to in a women's race. You got to have a little poise. <laughs> Yeah, you've beaten up Bush. You pushed her under the bus. We're only two sleds in. Man. I didn't say, I didn't name names. <laughs> None required. My right, development haircut going on for Evo de Brown as well. 25 euro. Ah. That's a good deal. That <laughs> was a good deal. <laughs> Next up, Germany's Christoph Harfer. Seventh World Cup race for him. He raced here last season as well in one of his uh, couple of appearances. He's got Christian Hummers behind him from Arken, 27-year-old brakeman, 27-year-old driver. His best result in his uh, half-dozen World Cup career races up until now was in Segulda last year, where he got the bronze medal in race two. Let's see if he can up his game from 12th yesterday. 505 is a pretty decent getaway. And we're going to want to keep an eye on his on his speed at the, the 101 ish clock um, and you're going to want to be above that for hoping big speeds at the bottom and uh, clip people in those final two uh, yeah. intersections and it's it's critical not to give speed away here at the top of the track but 101.4 is good that's as quick as benny meyer so he's 1100s back He's holding on to Meyer's coattails let's see if the fes sled gets good speed at the bottom that's a decent exit out of 14 and out of 15. Here we go. 125.6 for Meyer. 125.8 for half of this. Could be close at the line. And is he ahead? Yes, he is by 400s. Yeah, it's, we we seen that a lot yesterday, where people were making up massive deficits at those in that final Chrysler. Yeah, yeah. And, and that kind of follows you all the way down from corner 11. If you've got good exit out of 11 and out of 13, then you it all shows in the Chrysler. And then, of course, you've got to make sure you don't overdrive it and hold it too low in the Chrysler. Great view of the choreography on ice, trying to get two huge guys into these tiny sleds. Would be just great dancers when their careers are over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure many bobsledders have done dancing on ice. They've done jungle, they've done baking. Yeah. Yeah, our teammate Ryan Summers, he's a big he's a big foodie guy. So yeah, yeah, yeah I can see him being a chef when he's done. All right, not a, not just a tailgate grill guy. <laughs> no, no. All right. That's good to know when we get hungry, because frankly I'm getting bored of the toasted sandwich machine in the back of the booth. Yeah. So there's your race leader, Christoph Harfer with Christian Hammers. Next up is Roman Heinrich of France. And Roman Heinrich, best result this season, sixth place in Innsbruck. 
This is the European Championships, don't forget, and he was the bronze medalist last year. Finished in 15th place in yesterday's race. Yeah, entirely happy with it. No, that would be a, that would be considered a disappointment for him, and I'm sure he's looking to improve on that big time today. Yeah, Heinrich didn't race in the World Cup here last season. So again, short on knowledge. 55-5 though, best momentum out of the first corner. And a 4.99 start. Yeah, and a double top, a double bump tap, but a three there is is, is better than a, a tap and skid. Yeah, keeps you parallel. Like skis or skates, when the runners get sideways, they slow you down. You hear the tap as he hits the wall into 11. Nice transition, 300s in it, 114.1 one though, he's a kilometre now down on Benny Meyer, he's down on speed to Christoph Harfer, a little skid into 15 and 16. And he's going to... And two tenths behind at the line. But again, these three or four sleds, Harfer, Meyer, Heinrich, they were hanging around yesterday together, and they're hanging around today together. Heinrich was 15th, half at 12th, and Benny Meyer 14th, so they're not far apart today either. Great view down into the brakeman. You've got to be powerful, fast, but you've also got to be super flexible to be a brakeman. You, you basically, you've got to be able to kiss your backside goodbye every time you, you sit in the sled. Well, and i got to say, this track helps you out because uh, <laughs> the G-force here is so good that it just it, it forces you down there. Yeah. And i got to say, it is surprising how low you can get when you're, when you're going down. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. I'll be yeah. through a Revo in Cortina. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even when you're not flexible, yeah. it makes your back do things that actually it doesn't really want to do. Next up, Russia's Alexei Stolner finished in eighth place yesterday, the 32-year-old. And although Russia has its own track in Sochi, which is holding the Luge World Championships this weekend, this is Russia's home track. This is where they start their season, it's where they finish post-season, it's where all these drivers learn to drive. And those who learn to drive here say, OK, we have no fear of anywhere else. Late pass at Altenberg, Whistler, bring it on. After Segulda, nothing can be this bad. I uh, pushed 503. Wow, yesterday. that's a good start. 499 for them. Again, his top half of the track was really good. It got away from him a bit below quarter 11 yesterday. 1100s up at the start. He's building his advantage over Christoph Harfer. 101.4. Uh, ties the fastest uh, speed we've yeah. seen at that clock so far. The gap has come down a little over Harfer. He hung on a bit there. All right, here we go. Within a hundredth of the lead. 113.6, though. That's not great speed. Benny Meyer was 115.1. A big late flop and a skid off 15 going uphill over the run into 16. That's going to cost him a quarter of a second. 49.95. It's that. amazing how much time a mistake off corner 15 can cost you. Well, and runner choice is truly a, a difficult option here because it's such a tight track and there's tight steers. You know, you want a thinner runner for control, yeah. but fatter runners are faster. So some people are just running the fat runners and hoping they can hang on. Yeah. That's why you see them down at the bottom, you know, flying yeah. versus people with the, the thin runners at the, and they're, the, you know, they're steering hard, but they're, but they're not uh, making up that time at the bottom. Yeah, the fat runners are kind of a drift car at the top, but you're turbo part powered at the bottom. And yeah, Stolnev, it was a decent start. It was a decent drive, but the flop off 15, that really crippled his time, and as a result, he is fourth out of our five sleds. I'm not sure he's going to improve on yesterday's eighth place. He didn't look happy after the second run. He looks even less happy now, and I'm not going to lip-read that Russian for you either. Christoph Harfer, Benny Meyer, Roman Heinrich, the first three after five sleds down. Seaman Friedley of Switzerland is our sixth of 18 runners in the final two-man race of the season. And this is his third World Cup race. Yesterday, his second, he lay in the bronze medal position after the first heat and going for gold, crashed out. 4.93 getaway. Well, that shows that he and Gregory Jones, who's in the sled there and in the second run, uh, they did not hold back at the start. Yeah, he's a young driver, yep. obviously. Uh, he used to be a brakeman for 
for, for Swiss Team One, and uh, he's, he's come a long way pretty quickly, actually. I'm sure the Swiss program is excited about what he's been able to do. Yeah, he, Mikkel Vogt, and Mikkel Kwonen, who's the other brakeman that we saw a couple of years ago converting to becoming a driver, have all produced big results. And Seaman Friedley, this is another really good run. He drove yesterday like a total veteran, not like a veteran in only his second year of driving. 126.4, top speed at the line, 49.66. That this is his third World Cup race. It's his second year of driving. He's 14 hundredths off the fastest run ever down this track. Yeah, he he knows something about this track, and um, he was flying down at the bottom with the yeah. 125 hit. He sure was. Well, he won here in January in the Europa Cup, the second tier of sliding, and that's where he's spent most of his last two seasons learning his craft. But oh boy, has he come hunting for bear! It's a great looking run. I'm not sure whether he's got fat runners or skinny runners. He gets a little drift that actually puts him on the right side coming into 16, which is where you want to be. So that worked well for him. And yesterday's crash was just one of those bumps in the road that you have to take as a bobsledder. Last year, Oscar's keeper Manus of Latvia was beaten in both his home races by Francesco Friedrich. Yesterday, he turned the tables on Friedrich to claim his first ever two-man World Cup win after winning in four-man back in uh, Samaritz in 2017. The friends, the family are all here. Lots of Latvian fans, hundreds and hundreds, thousands and thousands of Latvian fans packing into the track yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we all compete against each other, but essentially we compete against the clock, and it was actually nice to see Kibermanis win, win that yeah. race. He well, uh, took them after the race. They got a start record, but they didn't keep the track record. Francesco Friedrich took that away from them, so they've got two goals today, win the European Championship and get the track record back. 56-2, fastest velocity we've seen. start only three hundreds off their own record set yesterday in a frankly unbelievable 4.80 everybody was a bit open mouthed at that this is a great looking drive as well 114.8 though to 115.1 of Benny Meyer he gets a good exit off 15 nicely into 16 uses the big first first pressure doesn't fight the sled not a new track record yet 49.53 he missed it by a whole hundred yeah, there, and there's a few things that he can clean up for the second heat, too. And, yeah. You know, if, if the ice speeds up and helps him, I mean, he could walk away with the track record. He could walk away with the track yeah. record, with the gold medal, and with the European Championship, which is a huge deal for the Latvians as well. Well, and how many fans are here today? It's crazy. I can't yeah. believe it. They have a whole stage down there at the bottom, and, and, and it's... This is just a great venue to be at for a race. Yeah, it really is. Full of excitement, full of, of cheering Latvian fans. And Oscar's keeper Manis, that was a great shout to lead this first heat. And there's no Francesco Friedrich, but keeper Manis is not alone. There is another huge hometown hero coming up soon. And that's going to be a very interesting battle to see which of the two Oscars before, comes out on top. Before that. Before that, <laughs> the big deal for Ben Coquel. I recognize that guy. You sat behind him <laughs> yesterday yeah. to finish on the podium yeah. in a crazy race yesterday. He's got Sam Giguere behind him, just in Crips of Canada, making his 67th World Cup start, his 63rd as a driver. First time here, though, so it's a huge learning curve. Yeah. Chiguer runs it way down to corner one, 491. He's trying to get that velocity up there at the start. Yeah, Sam will be soaked with that. Uh, yeah. It's his first race in a long time in a two-man. And uh, I know he's excited. He's been singing all week. And when a French man's singing, he's excited. <laughs> Yeah, his last two-man World Cup race was February 2016. He's been racing in the North America's Cup. Five races, five wins. Whoa, again, that magnet in the wall drawing the bunk in, just like it did in Justin's first run. 
it seems like it really wants to suck it over to that wall, doesn't yeah. it? I'm wondering whether it's some kind of aero effect. Fifth place of the line, 49.78. What position were you in again? Remind me off the first heat yesterday. I think it was. I think it was fifth. It was yeah. fifth. Yeah. 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 Well, fifth place at the line as of now. And. Uh, but you know, Cripps is a he's a stone cold uh, ice in the veins guy. So yeah. he, you know, he's he's the epitome of consistency. And I know Sam's honored to be in the back, and any time you get to ride with a, a gold medalist at the Olympics, it's oh, yeah. exciting. I'm not sure what, what Sam was doing with the hands there all the way up the cage, just getting himself settled <laughs> yeah, in the sled yeah. without rocking yeah, it. Yeah. And here's that magnet in the wall that just draws the Canadian sled in. Talk about consistency. His two runs yesterday, 49.76 in the first heat, 49.75 in the second. He's just done a 49.78. I think he's kind of batting a par there, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, that's winning golf, isn't it? Yes, I mean, it I is. I don't have too much time to golf, but I know a guy like you is probably... <laughs> well, I know, I know a guy who does. Yeah. Hello, John Morgan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't put money on a game with Morgan. Uh, he's a real hustler. 15th World Cup race for the most experienced Swiss slider in the World Cup team, Mikel Vogt. By the way, Ben Hefty, remember him? Just won the Swiss Championships in Samaritz yesterday. Life in the old dog yet. Really? Maybe not World Cup life, but... <laughs> and Mikel Vogt, what a season he's having. Fourth in the overall World Cup points. I mean, what a year. A five dead start for he and Sandro Michel. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't say that he's he's shocked about the position he's in because everybody's trying to win, but I definitely would say that he's, he's pumped about it. Yeah, no question at all. He had a great rookie season last year and he has built on that this year. Fast starts, soft hands. He does a great line of driving, just gets a little hung up there on the exit, rattles the wall. Out of 13 into 14, here's the exit that counts. Gets away with a parallel tap. 113.5. He'll lose some time down here. Yeah, he is losing time. Seventh fastest start, and he is going to be hanging around with Alexei Stolnev and Ivo de Brown at the line. He is between the two of them. Chris Woolley on the left, Peter Ramsidel. Uh, Ramsidel had the uh, welding gear out yesterday to patch up the sled of Seaman Friedley. The driver and the brakeman were okay after the uh, after the crash, but the sled was definitely uh, a few hits the worse. And I'm so impressed with those guys to have a, to have a crash like that yesterday and come out and lay down another smoker like that. I mean, that's 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 com competition and that's being a comp competitor. I mean, that's what you love about sport. And Sandra Michel there running past our cameraman, kind of forgot where the start, <laughs> where the first corner was. But so far, corner 11 and corner 13, people seem to have it relatively figured out today. A bit it's more of a handle on it, absolutely yeah. right. It looks like it. But then yesterday, because of the humidity when it was trying to snow, I think the track got very skiddy. Uh, certainly on Friday evening, Mickey Grunberg, the head of, uh, uh, of uh, the skeleton, group was saying that it was like soap. Well, next up, yesterday's fifth place finishers and uh, the romancers of the women's bobsled field. Go and look online for the uh, video of them singing Ed Sheeran hits to the girls on uh, Valentine's Day. Greg Cackett behind Brad Hall. And these guys, again, feeling no pain this season, metaphorically at least, because Cackett's had a back injury for two or three weeks. 4.97. That's a really good start. Four fastest in the field. Yeah, and it's day two of racing for these guys, so it'll take a bit of a toll on them as far as the start's concerned. And unusually here, the two-man brakeman back in the two-man sled, but without two buddies to help, because you'd normally be in a four-man race on Sunday. So just down to these two guys again. Little tap for Brad Hall. And again, speed is drifting away. Not sure what the setup is today compared to yesterday. Yesterday, the sled looked a little skiddier at the tail. Today, more planted. He's drifted from fourth at the start down to ninth. Now up to eighth ahead of Mikel Vogt. And at the line, eighth place it is. Sean Olsen there in the center. Up no. until uh, 2020, he was Britain's last Olympic bronze medalist in four-man. John Jackson and his crew have now also been awarded their Olympic bronze medals. He's disappointed with that, isn't he? Yeah. 
I mean, Brad's in a tight spot here with the with the overall points. Yeah. And, and so he's, you know, he's trying to, to move up, and it's European Championships, so. Yeah, absolutely. And he's trying to overhaul the likes of Alexis Stulev. In fact, Stulev is his direct target, only 14 points ahead, which is two places, but he's one place behind Stulev after the first heat. And all of that does matter. Well, of course, because uh, we're going to Altenburg after this. Oh, yeah. And that's a, that's a tough place if you want, you know, the draw is based off this point system. Yeah. Oscar Skubermanis is our race leader from Seaman Friedley and Christoph Hafer. So one Latvian out front after our first 10 sleds. Next up is Romania's Mihai Tentia in only his fourth World Cup start in two-man. And Mihai finished a strong 10th yesterday. He's the Europa Cup champion, so he raced here in January. He's also the under-23 junior world champion. Just 21 years old, he and his brakeman Ciprian Darkotsi. They start 4.99. It's another strong-looking start from the Romanians. Friday night, a huge day for Romanian bobsledding when Anja Grecu got her first World Cup medal with a silver, just two hundredths off victory. Yeah, it's exciting times for the, for the Romanian program. Really? I mean. And, you know, talk about doing the most with the least. These guys are punching way above their financial weight. Yeah, and sometimes that's how it is. You find a way to get it done. Yeah. When you act as a team, it's not always about the money. Great looking run. He's come from sixth fastest start. He's now battling with Stolnev and Brad Hall for eighth place. He's ahead of Stolnev. He's in seventh behind Roman Heinrich by three hundreds. That's a really good run from Mihai Tentia. The more I see of this young kid, the more I like his driving style. And it is a very, very close race outside the leader's box. <laughs> well, he loads early. His brakeman, Chiprian, runs a long way down, not quite as far as we just saw a couple of sleds ago from uh, Mikel Vogt and Sandro Michel. You mentioned earlier that normally we'd be doing format today. Yeah. You, you just can't do format here. It's Nothing. too tight, and that gives you an idea as to, to how difficult something is. Yeah, it was seems. built originally as a luge track by the Soviet Union and uh, became a, a bobsleigh and skeleton track later in its development. But, uh, yeah, it's like trying to race a helicopter around your lounge if you try and get a four-man down here. Yun Jung Won of Korea, our former World Cup champion in two-man, in his today 50th World Cup start as a two-man driver. He's had two wins and four other medals in that time. And yesterday, crashed out in the second heat. And he was battling then for medals again, wasn't he? This development BTC sled that he's got seems to be working well. 5.01 the getaway. And again, like Seaman Friedley, who had Gregory Jones in yesterday's crash and today, it was Kim Jin Su who was the brakeman in yesterday's crash. He's pushing one again today. And that was the, the tenth fastest start, but his velocity was seventh, so he, he does have an opportunity here to gain some speed. And he is on. Yeah, that's good speed. 101 2, not the best we've seen, but it's going to keep him in the top 10. Got the exit nicely off 14, avoids dragging down the one with the wall. 114 1. Out of 15, little skiddy has to adjust the runners to bring it to the driver's right, and that's not a good line in the Chrysler. He loses a little bit of ground. 49 9 2. That is seventh place for Yun Jong Wan of Korea. So that puts him 100th ahead of Mihai Tentea of Romania. Mihai in his fourth World Cup in two-man, one in his 50th. And that was a little late, the exit. Yeah, bringing you down here late off 14, and that late rear pressure just drifts the sled across to the wall. Yeah, and he had a bit of a skid into mm. the final the final corner, Kreisel there, and Again. that stole some speed for him. Yeah, and the nose was just yeah. drifting over to the inside there as it went out of shot, and that's not where you need to be. You need to be hard over to the right-hand wall. But, well, 
Now then, birthday time for Oscars Melbardis. It is his birthday today. It is his return to World Cup action. It's his first race in the top tier in bobsleigh since the Olympic Games in 2018. He's got Intars Dambis behind him. Yesterday, he and his crew were awarded their Sochi bronze in two-man and their Sochi gold in four-man. Yeah, and it's, it's awesome to see Malbardis racing. I mean, when I first joined the sport, when I was just a lad, you know? Yeah. He was, he was the man on the push bar, and it's, you know, it's the sport is different without him, and it's great to see him back. Yeah, he's still a beast, isn't he? He and, uh, and uh, Darwin Strayskins struggled with back injuries going into Pyeongchang. But he's had corrective surgery, and he is back racing. He's raced in Europa Cup this year and last. Getting his fitness back, getting his mojo working. 3,800s back though, this is another eighth place run with one, with Tenteo, with Stolnev, with Brad Hall. Nobody, it seems, can find top six speed at the moment, although he does at the line, 49.88. Well, this is kind of a valedictory performance. Yesterday was a huge day. It was a huge day, not just for the crowd that were here, for Melbardis and his two crews, because Dalmas was with him in the two-man and the four-man. Uh, but also for Latvia, it's a, it's a nation of fewer than two million people, and that man there is the first ever Olympic gold medalist in the nation's 100-year history. So it was a huge day for Latvia yesterday. Well, and it seemed like all two million people were at the track last yeah, night to cheer about it, you know? And, uh, I mean, you could feel the energy. Yeah. Um, it was super exciting. It's his first World Cup race since Koenigsee in 2018, the last pre-Olympic race, and he's got lots to think about. Rostislav Gajtukovic, silver medalist in the two-man junior worlds, gold medalist in the four-man junior worlds last week in Winterberg. He's got Mikhail Mordasov behind him, and this young man, unless something happens to his fitness, is going to overhaul everybody the Russians have ever put before us. He is young and has got all the talent he needs. He was fourth yesterday in only his second ever World Cup race. And 4.90 is all part of the package. He gained so many fast-pushing drivers. Whether they started as brake men or came right in as drivers, it's so important to have that speed. And a really good start speed, so he'll, he'll look to multiply that down the track. He actually showed up for the four-man races in uh, Winterberg, the double four-mans earlier, yeah. and you could see that he had some talent. Yeah. And Gajukovic, of course, like the other Russians, this is where he learned to drive. This is his home track. He's done more runs here probably than everywhere else put together. 1.13.7, not the best speed we've seen. I don't think there's so much left in the track. Is it starting to frost up a little? 11th fastest at the line, and that's a 12th place run off the second fastest start. And just sometimes, when you see a driver looking like he's having a good run and the clock tells you different, you look at the things that you can't see. The aerodynamics of the sled haven't changed since yesterday, but the runners may have. And like a race car, runners are silver and shiny, race car tires are round and black. That's not the end of it. They're all very different in what they do. Yeah, we spoke about the, the, the width of the runners earlier, and, uh, you know, he had really good start speed, so there really wasn't any reason for him to, to be losing time so yeah. early. Um, so you got to imagine that something with the, the runners or if even the ice conditions have changed yeah. a bit. I'm wondering how much the ice is sagging. You know, so Oscar's Melbardis on a track that he knows intimately, only getting six quickest. Oscar's keeper Manis may have got the window in the performance that he needed coming out in the top seven. He leads from Seaman Freely and Christoph Harfer, all top six starters. So next up is Suk Yun Jin from Korea with Chai Byung Do behind him, who must bump his head on pretty much every changing room door he ever sees, mustn't he? <laughs> He's not exactly a shrinking violet. I want to see him in the leader's box next to Mihai Tentia. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's tall. <laughs> he is a huge guy, and he still disappears into the sled. OK, 5.08 is the start. And only the 14th fastest velocity from the 15th fastest start. 
Not a bad exit of three. And he's driving Yun Jong Wan's old white sled as Wan is now using the development BTC sled. 100.7 to 101.7 of Seaman Friedley. Let's take a look at the exit. The crossover into 12 is very quick by the time we catch up with him. They're out of 12, all the way down the wall. Bumping away out of 15 into 16, and big height early on as well. 14th fastest at the line and 15th position. 50.54. So the last good time we saw was Oscars Melbardis. That was good enough for sixth. But uh, down towards the tail of the field. Yeah, and that, that straightaway was tough for him there because, yeah. you know, you, you can tap on the wall, but you don't want to be going sideways. It's like, it's like stopping a, a hockey skate. You know, yeah. It slows you down. And again, watch the runner tips. He hauled it off there, drove it straight into the wall, whether he intended to or not. He was late with the steer, off 14, slammed it into the wall, and then over the brow, watch it break away, just like one, diving completely to the wrong side, and that sends him straight to the roof. And the brakeman there knows you are elevating really fast. That's jet-assisted okay, takeoff there awesome. into 16. Big pressure, and you feel it. Not a great bottom half for Sukyun Jin. Okay, next up we have Max Ilman of Germany. He made his World Cup debut yesterday. He drew start number one, because, you know, it's not tough enough anyway. 21-year-old from Chemnitz. Crashed in the first run. Eric Strauss got in the back of the sled for the second heat, and Eric's with him again today, hoping that he is the lucky charm. A 5.05 getaway. Hillman started as a luge slider, so he may well have seen this track before in luge. He raced here in the Europa Cup in the uh, two-man in January, just a couple of weeks ago. In fact, when he started driving, he won his first ever Europa Cup race. And what a way to start a sliding career, doing luge. I mean, yeah. People are doing that when they're 10 years old. Yeah. Younger. But, yeah, you go to Innsbruck, and you've got three- and four-year-old kids <laughs> going down from the, from the kiddie start. 113 kilometers an hour. The speed's not great on the FES sled, is it? That's a little bit of a worry. And he manages to avoid the short wall on the inside. A 50.528 uh, slide. And that leaves him in 15th ahead of Suk Yun Jin, who just preceded him down the ice. And there's only the two German sleds here. Francesco Friedrich raced yesterday, but is not racing today. Nico Walter's back home in Altenburg, and joining him has been Johannes Lochner, training up for the world champs. Yeah, I'm sure Friedrich took off early to go join him. Yep. Um, get ready, because obviously a home, a home world is a big deal. Yep, tied up the Crystal Globe, and uh, he would rather win the world championship than the European championship, and it may not come down to a toss-up between the two, but he's taking no chances. Again, big early height in 16. And that takes away some of the speed, adds a few meters to the track. There's Max Hillman. Laughed off yesterday's crash and got back on the horse that threw him. Two to go in the first heat. Marcus Treichel and Marcus Gluck next up for Austria. Finished in 13th place yesterday ahead of teammate Benny Meyer. So Treichel, 26 years old. Born like Meyer into a sliding family. His parents are part of the uh, team that run the track in Innsbruck. Benny Meyer's dad, of course, Manfred, for many years, the coach of the Austrian bobsleigh team. 5-1-7 start for Trichel and Marcus Gluck. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Trichel, I think he's been dealing with an injury, so he squeezes as much as he can out of yeah. that start, but it's, it's difficult, you know. It is difficult. He's got a broken foot he's had for several weeks now. And, uh, yeah, I can't imagine what running on a broken foot feels like. Well, I mean, it, trying to nurse, nurse a broken foot back to full health yeah. while you're racing during the season yeah. is just a nightmare. And again, the double, as you say, double two-man weekend here, as opposed to double four-man that we had uh, earlier in the season, means that he's got to do half the work twice as opposed to half the work once and then a quarter of the work the second run. 
although Brayman would argue, of course, the driver only does a quarter of the race, even in two months. <laughs> 50.38 uh -huh. run for Marcus Tricol. Well, he had the 17th start and 16th at the bottom. So uh, he outdrives Yunjin Suk of Korea, who had the 16th fastest start, but was 17th at the bottom. So they're kind of hanging out together there. Yeah, a little flip-flop there. Yeah, yeah. Again, Big Height gets nosed away there, and that second pressure almost gets him in trouble. He knows that it's coming, though. Steers himself off. And again, trying to hug that right-hand wall. Just gets nudged away, going into 16, and that's what caused that spike early on. And, uh... So our final sled then is for Italian Mattia Variola. Again, as yesterday, Alexei Acciori behind him, bless you. 12th World Cup start for Mattia, only his third as a driver though in two man. Another former brakeman converted to the front handles. And he's not alone in that in the field, as we saw Seaman Friedley and a whole bunch of others, including Justin Cripps and Oscars Melbardis, started their career as brakeman. The great Christoph Langen started his career as a brakeman. Yeah, very, very successful drivers came from the back seat wanting to take control. There was a bunch of social media posts going around about the Vancouver Games being 10 years ago, and you got to see some old yeah. photos of Justin when he was a brakeman. Yeah. <laughs> Looking like a kid. Yeah, 10 years ago this weekend, wasn't it, the opening for the Vancouver Games? And we're now two years away from Beijing. We're a year away from getting to see the track that they built in Beijing, which has the world's biggest chrysal. And I, I suspect the track is going to be state-of-the-art. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, the facilities will be 100% state-of-the-art. And Rahul over goes Variola. And again, that's what we talked about earlier. Getting that late take-on means you are late on the exit and centrifugal force has not done with you. Yeah, and it pushes you up and there's nothing you can do. Yeah. And they're hanging on, clinging into the tiny handles on the floor of the sled. It's not a comfortable place to be when the sled goes over. It's not a comfortable place to be when it doesn't, to be honest, but much less comfortable when it's upside down. They cross the line and they do record a time. So if they are ready to go for the second heat, then they can do so. They'll have to get back up to the top in fairly short order. Well, less second than heat due to start in 50, uh, 45 minutes. Less than comfortable might be a bit of an undersell. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, you're sliding on ice, but it gets real hot real quick when, you're, when your shoulder's touching it, and it's, 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 it's pretty nasty. Yeah, he got a late exit there, and then that hit going into the corner, just rolled the sled over. As soon as the corner arrived, the sled was unbalanced and just rolled into the corner. And as you say, yeah, you can see the brakeman there, his shoulder on the ice. We talked about this yesterday in the uh, crash that Max Illman had. His brakeman didn't go again because he got pretty bad ice burns. And it's, it is like going down the road if you come off a motorcycle. A lot of athletes wear a Kevlar Burns vest. You can see the medical team down there just checking that they are not suffering from any kind of concussion-related uh, injuries. A lot of athletes do wear a Burns vest, but a lot don't. Burns vests are a lot cheaper than cosmetic surgery, and it's about time they were mandatory like helmets. But they hurt the aerodynamics, you know, they're a little bulky. If everybody's got one, like a helmet, it's the same. <laughs> And the sport needs to be looking after athletes who are competitive and don't necessarily want to look after themselves. Well, Oscars Kibermanis and Mats Miknis are our race leaders for Latvia. And Kibermanis, after leading the first heat yesterday, converted successfully for gold. Seaman Friedley, one place further up than yesterday. And Christoph Harfer. Well, that's a great run for him in third place. He was 12th in yesterday's race. Benny Meyer fourth was 14th yesterday. Dustin Cripps fifth. Oh, he finished in the bronze medal position with Ben Cokewell beside him yesterday. Dominic Dvorak did not start. Mattia Variola crashed in the first round. We may see him again in the second. Whatever happens, we will be back at 1,500 local, 1,300 GMT. And that is 0800 Eastern. Wherever you are, join us then, please. Ben Cokewell, me, Martin Haven, and the IBSF TV crew for our last World Cup slide. 
before we head to the World Championships. We'll see you then.